वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस वंडरफुल इवनिंग द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर रिट्रीट गैदरिंग इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज वी टॉक ऑफ डेवलपमेंट बट वेदांता एज ए साइंस ऑफ प्रोग्रेसिव डेवलपमेंट हाउ कैन वी रिलेट a uh, human development to vedanta that is a very important question because everybody speaks about human development and each one has his own idea his or her own idea of what human development is really is is it economic development is it social development is it moral development there are so many ways of looking at the issue of human development the word development means human beings over a period of time if you see history they have been trying to become better human beings create better facilities live a better life and ordinarily that is what is known as progressive human development but vedanta is a science of progressive human development does it cover <clears throat> all these paradigms which have been used and so many efforts have been made by mankind by the scientists by politicians by economists by everybody who get their inspiration from different sciences so human kind developed lot of sciences each science has a particular role to play in development you call you say there is medical development in the medical field which tries to make human health that is human human health accessible to all better and better health facilities so also economics earlier it was all left to <clears throat> or whoever is fittest would gather wealth but then there were systems in place which tried to share the wealth that is created by human beings with underprivileged and less privileged people so that is why many economic theories came the idea of an ideal state idea of an ideal political system which will ensure that the fruits of economic social scientific and also political development reaches every human being and ideally they say it is the last person the least under privileged person if he is happy this world is a developed world but we see though we see we say that we are trying for human development development in one geographical location one country is at the expense of some other country you see development in one country but you see under development or Uh, no development at all in some other countries so various theories and various institutions uh, world organizations have been created to see that how can we balance how can we uh, create a society where human development progresses so is there a scientific way the economist will say my science is perfect because if i have a nice economic theory then the benefits of all other sciences all other political systems will reach the masses the doctor may not agree he may say if i create a healthy world and share my knowledge with all the people who are likely to fall ill fall sick and i can contribute because they can earn more money they good health results in economic development so everybody has his or own idea of development and we can't blame them because they have been studying in a particular field so suppose one becomes a doctor or an engineer or a civil engineer he will speak his idea of development is how how he can help build better facilities the civil engineer or any other engineers all engineers they want to make human life easier more comfortable and save him from lot of difficulties trouble and pain so everybody no doubt every country every human being 
in the bottom of his heart he feels there should be development progressive development not only at the individual level but also at the family level if one is happy it it's it's not sufficient for him he wants the family to be happy once his family is happy then he will look and wants to make his community happy or the area there where he lives or maybe the country that he lives in he wants all the members of the country be happy because he has uh, benefited from the fruits of economic social medical and all other various development parameters then where well, what is the position of vedanta because vedanta is a religious system and very often before swami vivekananda came to the west religion was something separate from the scientific and technological progress that human kind made to such an extent that when swami vivekananda first came to england where the benefits of scientific educational and industrial development were seen first then of course it spread to other countries of europe and also uh, america and many other countries became prosperous but when swami vivekananda came religion had a very bad name the orthodox the superstitious the dogmatic religion and science and religion were calling quarreling with each other many people even today they are happy to be atheists they said religion has no role in our life if we get a good job if we get good uh, enter a good profession or if we do some good business and we are economically happy healthy individuals and healthy as a society then why do we need religion because i was born in a particular religion i might go to church or a temple or a mosque but do i really need it i can do without religion there are many people and we can't blame them because there are many people who are very happy without ever going entering a church or a temple or any religious organization they seem to be happy and they are also perhaps in their own way they are happy so the question is is vedanta something to do has vedanta something to do with religion or has it something to do with spirituality as a science so swami vivekananda the challenge before him was that he wanted to show the scientific community he said now you are <coughs> because of your efforts and because of your success all the scientific inventions and the industrial development that was a result of that they felt that mankind is progressing and the development is taking place first in the european countries then the americans felt we should also develop japan also felt we should follow this model people there seem to be much happy then the third world they started creating divisions that third world countries are not uh, very well developed because they don't give importance to scientific education or a scientific approach to life so you follow us uh, forget your religion and other things they are not going to change your life because religion was not practiced as it should have been so here is comes the role of here is the role which vedanta has to play as a progressive science i am repeating it is a progressive science of human development that means all the theories scientific theories of human development are included in vedanta so you may ask a question we read vedanta we listen to youtube talks so much of vedanta is spoken all over but uh, nowhere uh, they say it is a scientific of course some uh, many of the speakers on or the interpreters of vedanta have shown and the first was swami vivekananda because he came in a scientific age not that our other other vedantists before him did not know this they also knew in india as well as wherever vedanta went there were people who followed vedanta like we have an offshoot of vedanta which is known as yoga patanjali's yoga claims or the tradition patanjali was the last one who 
wrote the Yoga Sutra. He says, this is a very scientific system of, it, it's a science which deals, it's a science of the mind. And as you know, there are many sciences. But the, they say the science of the mind is the most important science. It's the king of all sciences. That is why Swami Vivekananda gave the name to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and his commentary, Raj Yoga. Raj Yoga is that actually means the king of sciences. Because if your mind is not okay, no matter how much development, how much wealth you have, your mind is the window to all that you pro, all that you gain, all that you all the progress that you make in the outer world. You may be a millionaire, but if your mind is not able to enjoy that or not able to get the benefits of that and you become cruel, you use that same science and technology to kill others or to trouble others, result you become miserable, make others miserable, then what's the use? So that is why Swami Vivekananda said Rajoga or Patanjali's Yoga Sutras which are again based on the Vedantic principles is a progressive science of human development because they start with the mind. Our mind or everyone's mind is a window to the world. We are happy or unhappy depending on how we look at the world. In the same situation, if you put two people, maybe they are brothers, in the same situation one will cry, one will say this is a miserable world, he will go on criticizing, because his mind shows him this world is a useless place. And he goes on becoming very negative, very critical of everything. The other fellow is born in the same situation, with the same parents, with the same society, maybe the same education, but he progresses. How is that? Because his mind, in his mind was trained in such a way that he saw the positive side of life, and the other person saw always trained himself to see only negative things. And then he, his mind went down, and then his career progress, everything went down. So that's why Swami Vivekananda says: first, you have to teach the child the important training as a progressive science, all sciences are very important. Each of these sciences has contributed a lot, but Swami Vivekananda says, if I had my education again, because he was a student of philosophy, he was a student of economics, he was a student of ge geography, uh, uh, he, he, did, he went to college, the traditional college that we go now, the education system was same. But he felt somewhere down the line he made a mistake and if he was given a chance that you go back to childhood and start your education all over again, he said, I would first train my mind, which was obviously felt was not given to children, even today. So he said, first I would master the science of the mind, which is known as psychology, but in Indian, uh, Indian philosophy it is known as yoga the real yoga, not the physical yoga, the real yoga which helps you to train the mind to make all other developments possible. So that is the king of all sciences because that is the science you have to learn either simultaneously in your school curriculum. In fact, in our old system, yoga was taught at the age of six. That is almost when you start going to school. Because they felt that with all the educational skills and the mental skills which the child will develop, he will be mastering many skills. Now there are more skills. There are art, computer skills, there are physical, physics, chemistry, engineering. So many fields have been created. Even in those days there were Artha Shastra was there, economics was there. There were different sciences, the science of metallurgy, science of Sushruta was there, science of medicine. So Vedanta did not say when the child went to the Gurukul or wherever, whichever school system he followed, he was asked to develop the mental skills side by side. 
that is why one of the most important ritual you may say it is a ritual but it is a very important event in the life of a child who is given education was the giving of the gayatri mantra it's not just a ritual gayatri mantra means it's it's a science of how do you train the child to train his mind to make right choices in life so that he doesn't suffer along with that he was taught other skills skills to develop certain trade carpentry so many things would work and then there were um, uh, blacksmiths who would, the, the trades that were prevailing in those days society might not have been so advanced in those days but still they had their own trades they had their own skills metallurgy and many things were there even civil engineering was highly developed in india so all these fields of sciences the rishis uh, whoever ran this gurukula they said no along with secular education or maybe the scientific education the scientific education of the mind was compulsory and that was done by giving the child the gayatri mantra which is not just a mantra it is just a prayer where the child is asked to make his mind quiet certain times of the day meditate so that his mind is balanced the all the knowledge that he gains will be used properly his personality will be such that every moment of his life when he makes some choice he will make the right choice now why why do our children suffer why do youth suffer why do adults suffer only because we made the wrong choice in life it is as simple as that because the education that we got in schools did not train the mind to make the right choices either our parents made choices for us the teacher said this is good so you do it you didn't have the capacity the buddhi the development of dhi which is the goal of gayatri mantra gayatri mantra says the whole mantra if you chant the end say dhiyo yo na prachodayat means the child is told at the age of 6 mind you not after that uh, that gayatri after 8 is just a waste of i mean it will not help much because he needs it right in uh, at in the class 1 it's like uh, if you give the gayatri mantra or the spiritual training training to train the mind after he becomes an adult it's gone because he is already um, his mind has been trained in such a way now he cannot uh, change it he knows what is good what is bad what is right choice what is wrong choice i don't want to follow this habit i don't want to smoke i don't want to do but i can't help it i can't make the right choice because my parents my teachers no nobody taught me how to make the right choice it is too late he may be very skilled he or she and mind you this chill when i say child i mean both he and she it the girl also was given this gayatri mantra because our ancestors felt whether is a boy or girl unfortunately our social customs uh, somehow deprived girls and women from taking the gayatri mantra they also need that choice making facility they also need buddhi it is known as buddhi buddhi means the capacity to choose rightly efficiently so that one is for one's own good and for the good of the world so if this faculty is missing then no matter how how highly qualified a person is he is going to make his own life miserable his family's life miserable and the society's life miserable he may be very intelligent because that part of training is there that skill set is there he has excelled in whatever field he might have done phd also but what what has he how how does he use his knowledge on a day to day basis in his own family in his own society the people around him in his workplace in his workplace also you can find some eccentric scientists they cannot get along well or very highly skilled people you know it is people just give them up because you can't work with that person he is highly intelligent but 
he cannot he has not learnt his buddhi has not been awakened his intellect that is uh, there is a difference between buddhi and intellect don't come confuse between the intellect in the western sense means the skill it is it is known as manas in uh, vedanta it says a highly trained skilled mind is not necessarily a wise mind wisdom comes from buddhi so a person who can use his wisdom is known as buddhiman in gita also it is mentioned which is a excellent text on vedanta they call it vyavasayatmika buddhi and that vyavasayatmika buddhi according to krishna is telling arjuna develop that vyavasayatmika buddhi which will enable you to concentrate and make the right choice don't just react <laughs> our problems in life is because our mind has not developed scientifically to the level of buddhi it is still a mind highly skilled mind but without the capacity to choose wisely so that is known as in the gita it says that a person may be intellectually he may be a phd may be very skilled in his particular field but when it comes to spirituality may be a spiritual pygmy he may not know anything his buddhi or his uh, uh, buddhi might not be developed so vedanta as a practical or maybe a progressive science of human development when we discuss <coughs> normally this there is a class which i take on alternate saturday in london in bharti vidya bhavan uh, which is meant for newcomers it's not meant for those who have familiar with vedanta or those who are familiar with gita and all our scriptures the problem is we think everybody knows we hardly know anything about vedanta it is just a word for us and listening to youtube videos is not going to help us to understand vedanta especially in the present context so this class vedanta is the science of human possibilities it is a similar title and i have been discussing for a very every alternate saturday it is held in bhavans from 4:30 to 5, uh, 4 to 5 normally that is the time it is there on youtube also it's a series of classes where vedanta it's almost similar to our title today as a progressive science of human development there the title is the science of human possibilities what are the different possibilities we have mental possibilities physical possibilities to begin with and we develop we go to the gym oh, that is part of vedanta nobody said you don't have to don't need a strong body anybody who develops his body is developing his developing at the first level so progressive but don't stop at the body level according to vedanta there are five levels progressive levels they are broadly classified our human possibilities as physical body then pranic body or vital body in english vital body means the life forces that keep the body healthy balance of these forces so it is very important to have progressive development from body not just body but by pranayama not just breathing pranayama is not just breathing pranayama means ayama means to control prana control five pranas you have to control not only breathing you have to control your digestion you have to control your uh, nervous energy which is vyana and udana so there are prana samana samana is the assimilation that you do when you eat food proper exercise so each prana has a different role in making our body strong so the development at the second level of our personality first is physical where we do lot of exercises do many things to keep the body fit eat the right food these are this is at the physical level that is definitely a very important part of vedanta so nutrition knowing how our body works and how our prana works how does it affect the mind because you see each level when you say progressive body affects the prana prana affects the mind mind affects the buddhi and buddhi affects our 
Karan Sharira. We'll come to that fifth level later on because that is the domain of spirituality. When you start becoming spiritual, uh, I mean spiritual in the Vedantic sense, you start from the third level. First or uh, fourth level. Third level, up to third level, everyone does. Every school, every university, every home, they are just bothered about first, second and third. Have a good body, good health, good prana, be very healthy, don't fall sick very often. Every father, every mother, every citizen is concerned about that. And nowadays because of so much of information available on the internet, we know what is good to eat, what should we avoid. In this we are experts, there is nobody, no need to teach. The fact that we don't follow it is a different thing. That is because of our lack of buddhi. We know what is right but we will eat the wrong thing. We know what is right. So buddhi tells you, if buddhi is developed it will tell this is harmful. You control this food. It's bad for your annamai kosha, pranamai kosha. And the manomai kosha tells are what is there, just eat. Next time we will see. That means the buddhi is not developed. So buddhi means the choice making capacity. It is so important in our life that if you don't have this buddhi, you can't make even a small decision as what to eat, what not to eat, when to sleep, when not to sleep, when to watch TV, when not to watch TV. So for progress, this buddhi is so important that the rishis felt the ideal age when the child becomes little sensible, you can't expect a three-year-old child to know all, the, develop a buddhi. But at least, they said six is the optimum age. Between six and eight, I was wondering why this ritual of Gayatri Mantra, which is known as the second birth. Mother has definitely given birth and with food and with proper exercise, up to the age of six, you allow him to play, he will be fine. But after that, the progressive development, the other two levels of development have to has to start. So they found six and between six and eight, the child is now in a, he is mature enough. Whichever school he goes to, even if he doesn't go to school, don't think intel illiterate people are. They may have far far more buddhi than. That's why Sri Ramakrishna refused to go to school. We think he, what's the reason? He said because that is not uh, in a my school, the school which he went in Kamar Pukur, if you have seen, uh, he was taught all the subjects. He could not, uh, he could not reconcile. He said my buddhi will not develop if I go to this school. It looks rather strange but he refused. He was wise, he was mature. And even Swami Vivekananda says this. None other than Swami Vivekananda who conquered the whole world with his ideas. He says, if at all we have made a mistake, we made a mistake because we learnt only second hand knowledge by going to universities. My guru, that is Siram Krishna, was the most original person because he developed the buddhi first by spiritual practices. And then whatever he wanted to know, with that concentrated mind, with that yogic mind, he gathered whatever he wanted, he learned from nature. And Swami Vivekananda says, many times when we were in his presence, we felt like fools. Fools in the spiritual sense. He would make the right decision, his mind was disciplined, everything was so systematic about him. He was never, in spite of the cancer, he was never seen to be even, he used to tell Akhandananda, who used to sometimes sit like this, he said, why are you uh, making a sorrowful face? What is there? Maybe there is some problem, uh, some worry, some anxiety, but don't show it to the world, you should be happy. You see Sri Krishna's life, even when he was suffering from cancer, there was so much of joy in that room. In Dakshineshwar, if you uh, read that wonderful life, so they were all Swami Vivekananda who went to the university felt that something was wrong and this my guru Sri Ramakrishna had a type of education which is most essential. After having that if you 
have other types of education it doesn't matter you may be highly skilled so swami vivekananda said the essence of all education is the development of the buddhi the fourth level of human personality vedanta clearly says at the age of 6 equal importance if not more i am not saying you have to discard academic learning but what was important was that not at the cost of development of buddhi so gayatri was given very seriously it was considered for both boys and girls it's not that it is a, a now it has become just a ritual you have to do it you spend a huge amount calling a priest feeding everyone and that is our yagna pavita poite in bangla they call poite it's more what you food you feed how many guests you invite that is important but what happens to that poor child why he is doing that he even he doesn't know his father also doesn't know unfortunately child will not know because he is just 6 years old he is told you have to do it and if even at a older age he will keep all the pictures of his yagna pavit see we fed so many sweets we spent such a big amount and that, that, that is all they know about yagna pavita without knowing what it is it is something that he is told that child has to be told that this is your companion the spiritual practice that has been designed for you will enable you to use your education properly by developing buddhi so that progressive development of the fourth level of personality is the scientific or the scientific and progressive way how human beings develop that is what vedanta discovered they said the third level which is manas which is a reactive mind our education 99% of our education is focused on the manas manas means A, a, how you react to the world outside suppose you are a mathematician you are given a problem and you, you can even call it nowadays they use the word intelligent intelligence quotient so he has a iq what is that iq iq means if you give him some problems he will do it better than other students so he has a higher iq and parents are very happy he has a very high iq he has got but what about the sq spiritual quotient he cannot take his own decisions he is uh, when anything happens he either panics he becomes anxious he is full of tension he is not able to deal with his problems of life so what will he do with the high iq so he will develop the manas which they said is necessary because manas means the reactive mind how you react to different inputs that you get through the eyes ears say exact for example one is a musician so if his music iq in fact there is a uh, wonderful uh, study which was made by howard gardner where he said because people were giving so much importance to only a few types of intelligences he says iq cannot be determined by his analytical skill is mathematical skill or there are eight and then finally added one ninth skill so nine ways of assessing a person so he called them he tried to find out how many skills are there of the one person can develop so he started with analytical skill logical skills he called it he is very good such a student will be a good mathematician good engineer also maybe because he can think in a very abstract way he can be a good mathematician is very good at analyzing things logic and other things are easy for him but that is not the only skill somebody else may have a visual skill he may become a good architect he can he may not be mathematically very intelligent his manas is not developed so much you give him some mathematical problem he can't solve it but if you tell him he can draw nicely he can have has a visual skill so gardner said visual skill is also important some people may have more visual skill then there is kinesthetic skill like sports people they think through their body 
they are very good at sports athletics any sports or game football because they their intelligence is focused on the kinesthetic skills the mind knows how to react how to play football how to play cricket how to play different games and in general they are very good at outdoor activities or physical activities so he called it kinesthetic skills then he said but there are some other people who have musical skills they are better than other people in understanding learning music very quickly so why not allow the child to develop that skill don't limit your skills then they said there are two more skills which he added he said one is intrapersonal and interpersonal intrapersonal means uh you may say it is a kind of skill which the child develops where his level of self confidence can be measured it is known as intrapersonal intra means inside how confident he is how uh, good is his body language because he is always confident wherever he goes but some people are nervous they are uh, always afraid of thing they are negative pessimistic so in, if a person has a intrapersonal skill he can become a very good leader or maybe a good politician also because he knows how to uh, have faith in himself swami vivekananda also said every child should be like nachiketa with that shraddha with that faith so that is intrapersonal that is what gardner says but it is all part of vedanta only but there is an interpersonal skill so he nicely has classified into so many skills interpersonal skills means he may be confident within confident of himself confident about his uh, confident of his own abilities but is he confident in the group can he get along well with people that is known as interpersonal skills so you see some people you have seen in this our everyday life we see examples of interpersonal some people get along well with everyone they also become good leaders because everybody somehow he adjusts with everyone but some people can't adjust even with their colleagues they keep fighting they don't have this in, interpersonal skills so whatever suits them they will choose that career and they should be allowed to choose that career but that is at a level of the mind vedanta says all these nine skills then there is another skill which i uh, uh, which is uh, dealing with the, this buddhi which comes very close to buddhi which he says it is he doesn't use the word spirit but he calls it moral skills because they don't believe in the idea if an atheist is studying a uh, human intelligence quotient he says he, he, the, even that is a skill how to be happy and give joy to others that is also a skill people who are moral who are very good ethically every everybody likes such a person not because he is intelligent but because he is a likable person a lovable person in fact uh, dr mahendralal sarkar he was a very very strong atheist in fact he said all this bhakti bhakti is all uh, you are spoiling that sri ram krishna then he said if you don't believe in vedanta you don't believe in religion don't believe in spirituality he, his whole attention was that science is the only way so he, he started an institute known as indian association for cultivation of sciences he said india is suffering because science is neglected so he was a scientist he was a great doctor allopath and then homeopath also so he came to treat sri ram krishna so he had this mental skills but somehow when people asked if you don't believe in anything then in fact he was open very open when sri ram krishna spoke of spiritual truth spiritual experiences he thought it is just till he examined him when he was in samadhi once he went as a doctor let me see and when he saw really there is no sign of life then he had to believe there is no other way but still he was very skeptical 
So then somebody asked him, if you are doubting everyone, everything, spirituality, Vedanta, everything, then why do you come again and again? Not that there were other doctors were also there. And he could have come and he is, towards the end, if you see Sri Ramakrishna, he used to sit for four or five hours. In the beginning when he came, he said, you know, because I come here to treat you, I lost so many patients. Mahindralal Sarkar used to say, I lost so many patients, so I, he used to hurry and go away, give the treatment. But as days passed, though he did not accept any uh, spiritual ideas of Sri Ramakrishna, he still came and when he was asked, he said something very significant. You see, I come here only for two reasons. One is he is simple and he is pure. So you see that is also a skill, a moral skill, that he is a good man. I come here not because he is spiritual, not because he has a vision. I don't even believe that he has uh, uh, the capacity. I, 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 not, I do not believe. He may have visions or he may not have. But my science doesn't allow me. I am an atheist. But I still understand or still feel that he is a good person. Much better than any other person. So lovable, so kind, so humble. And so good. And above all, very pure. At least he could appreciate that. So that skill, uh, Howard Gardner says, is the moral skill, ethical skill, which cannot be described. It is to be felt. A good man is a good man. Wherever he goes, whether he is a scientist, whether he is an illiterate person, you immediately know, you feel that this person is good. He can be trusted. So th these are the different mental skills, but they are still, eth to be ethical is not just enough. We have to go beyond that. Ethical, of course, you have to be good to become spiritual, but just by being good, like Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar is a classic example. When Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Thakur wanted, he knew that this person is basically spiritual. But somehow he felt that by being good, by helping others. He was such a philanthropist that anybody who went to him for help, he would help him. And he believed that is my philosophy. He also did not have so much interest in, but Thakur went to him. Sri Ramakrishna went, said, I want to visit Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar. So he said, see, all these wonderful things that you are doing is fine. And that was proved at the end of his life. In Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar's end of the life, he become became so upset that all the people whom he helped betrayed him to such an extent that if somebody scolded him or criticized him, said, Amitra Janina, when have you when I have I done something good to you? Means he thought everybody whom I have done good has betrayed me, has cheated me. So he's just lost faith in goodness. But a spiritual person will not lose faith in goodness. That, that shows that to be ethical is a mental skill. Definitely one has to be ethical. Otherwise one can't be spiritual. But one should not stop. There is a progressive development where you have to understand that you are the spirit. It's not just doing good is not the goal of life. It, it is essential. Uh, definitely it prevents you from doing bad. But if you think doing good is the end of life, then like Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, he lost faith. He said, all my life I have been helping and these people are most ungrateful. So he felt that, have I wasted my time? By just, there are people, you know, they, they want just maybe for a little recognition. They don't even want money. They want to help everyone. And they get sad. When the person who gets help does not respond, reciprocate. And then you say, Ma'am, we did so much, I did so much for that person, he doesn't even care. Then said, why, who asked you to do it? If you want something in return, then better don't do it. So what is that knowledge which helps you to do good without expecting any return? That it comes when you go to the fourth level, <coughs> that is the level of buddhi. So buddhi, the whole Bhagavad Gita is nothing but an explanation of what buddhi does 
sthita pragna that is the word that is used but in every chapter sri krishna will tell that ekeha that is vyavasayatmika buddhi the most practical importance of developing the higher mind see there are two layers of the mind one is the intelligent mind this nine skills which i spoke of kinesthetic musical skills the, one can have a combination of these skills but and even be a very good person well settled well adjusted person everybody likes him everybody likes him for the talent for his talents for his contribution to society but still vedanta says till the buddhi is now the level of buddhi the, that progression that progressive scientific development which happens at the level of buddhi that is when spiritual life starts till the first three levels everyone does and human kind thinks that if a person is very successful very noble very good and that is the goal of life yes of course he can say when he dies that i have not harmed anyone i have led a good life i have tried to help as much as i could and i have no regrets because i have not harmed anyone that is also a good achievement many people don't even achieve that but vedanta says there is still you can move forward that is what premanand ji i recently posted it on whatsapp egiye jao so sri ram krishna is to say go forward that means don't stop be you are a good man you are a skilled man you have developed all the three levels go forward so he used to tell a nice story in fact if we really want to know vedanta it is enough if we read the gospel and great master i firmly believe that you don't need to read any book in fact it will confuse you i'm not joking it really confuses vedanta if it is studied as an academic subject then we will be- become good academics but we will not get the essence of vedanta sri ram krishna because he didn't go to university because he did not reproduce the professors uh, swami vivekananda says what what did we do we went to the college some professor taught us something which was written by some in te- some textbook so all of, all my knowledge is second hand knowledge i felt so uh, i mean uh, my uh, he felt so inferior before thakur because his knowledge was fresh original nothing was he had his own uh, convictions based on his own experiences he did not say because huxley or somebody else swami ji says i could only quote i said oh shankara acharya says this this acharya says this somebody says this but sri ram krishna's method was different he was more scientific than all the scientists said if even if tom dick and harry says something i'll not believe it because if i experience i'll say it is true so that is what a scientist does he does not believe because somebody says even newton might have said something then einstein says no let me see if this newton's law work in the quantum universe and it doesn't work so they have to formulate new laws they have to formulate something else because it doesn't work that is the scientific approach not that newton was wrong but knowledge you have to go forward that's the idea in the scientific field also if some medical technology is very good it is working now but if the scientist thinks now that is the end of uh, we can't go further than this it's it will not progress in science we go on every day uh, some uh, scientist somewhere in the world is working some doctor is working <clears throat> to find a better technology or better way of treating disease so much of millions of pounds and dollars are spent in research why because they want to go forward they don't want to get stuck spirituality also we get stuck oh i have a faith i go to my temple i do my puja in fact one of the greatest i mean one um, it specialist i don't want to name him because this is going on youtube he he is a really i mean uh, technically is one of the uh, great 
leaders in the field of IT and deeply, I mean, his wife was deeply Hindu. That's what he claims. And he said once in one of the meetings, it is recorded. He said, in my house, when we married, we decided, I will do the earning. I will, I have a good job. You don't have to bother about earning. You do the spirituality part of it. Means I will give you, supply you with all the facilities, money and other things. You don't have to bother your head. But you concentrate on the, not the spiritual, the religious part. You do puja as if by his wife doing spirituality, how will he get? Uh, if the husband earns money, he can share it with his wife. But they, because that is a material thing. Spirituality you can't say, uh, you do japa, I'll do japa and you will get the benefit. He has to practice himself. But that is the understanding. They think everything is like barter. So spirituality has been reduced, I mean, I mean religion. Spirituality, uh, if one understands, one will not speak like that. It cannot be transferred. It's not something material. That I earn money and I share with my whole family. So you just don't bother. So I will do spirituality and all others will become spiritual. It doesn't happen. So that's the idea that this knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, is a journey where the personality which we speak of human development, it's a scientific process by, uh, there are many methods. Yoga is one method by controlling the mind. Then there is Gyan Yoga, there is Raj Yoga, there is Bhakti Yoga. Because you see there are many aspects of the mind which can be used for developing spirituality. Bhakti Yoga is using emotions. Every mind has four basic functions. So this is a very scientific way that why do you neglect? If you are emotional, express, use it to develop your buddhi, develop your spirituality. So if somebody is, uh, has a very wonderful emotional heart, then he has to use Bhakti Yoga in, as a sadhana, singing about the Lord, the bhajans and everything that we do dedicated to the Lord by expressing our emotions, using our talents. Singing is not just to express our, medic, our musical talents. That will be at the level of the mind. Manas, you may say, oh, such a wonderful classical song has been sung. But if the spirit is not there, if that bhakti is not there, then that emotion which has gone behind the singing is not causing any kind of progressive development in that personality. So singing with devotion, singing with devotion, using it as a method of uh, developing the Vijnanamai Kosha. As I said, we have Annamai Kosha, physical body, the Pranamai Kosha, the vital forces, once that is developed, it's all simultaneous. It's not that we first develop physically, then we develop. No, all should go together. In fact, as I said, at the, if at the age of six, our rishis felt that the Vignanamai Kosha also has to be developed. That capacity to make the right choices. Buddhi means to discriminate between the good and the pleasant. In uh, the small boy, in Nachiketa, I very often give this example because he was just 13 years old or 12 years old when he goes to Yama. And Yama finds him a fit candidate for spiritual knowledge. That means he had taken his spiritual practices, whatever was given to him at the age of 6 so seriously that within 6 years he became fit for receiving spiritual knowledge. Yama tests him. If you see the Kathopanishad, that's why Swami Vivekananda said every child, every youth, every family should read this. Nachiketa. Because spiritual life begins very early. And at the age of 13, this boy had the courage to tell his father that you are wrong. Because you have made the wrong choice. And he was not saying out of arrogance. He was saying because you only taught me this. The scriptures tell me this. So his buddhi had been developed. Shraddha was also there, faith in the capacity to take the right decision. So he had the courage, not only to tell his father, but also to go to Yama, 
whom he said, why uh, my father is uh, ignorant, he is doing all these rituals, I don't want to go, him to go to hell. So uh, he has actually loved his father, but his father was so angry that he was arguing with him. So poor Nachiketa had to go to Yama. Of course he was very willing because he knew that uh, uh, no, one, no one in the world knows the secret of immortality. So I have to go to Yama and Yama tells him the first stage of your development which you already have is the path the Shreya and Preya to select what is good that is Shreya and what is pleasant that is Preya. He says decision making, choice making becomes extremely difficult for a uh, man devoid of buddhi that he mistakenly chooses the pleasant and then he suffers. Whereas the intelligent person like Nachiketa chose the good. He said because you chose the Shreya, I am giving this knowledge to you. What you have to do to progressively make develop your personality, develop your buddhi and develop your spiritual personality. So that knowledge he gives after he is convinced that this person has maybe in a very small time from the age of six obviously in those days they were very strict about giving the Gayatri Mantra. So according to the scriptures it's one of the oldest prayers. This prayer for Buddhi is not a simple ritual. It is one of the oldest prayers in the world. The oldest mantra you can say. Though it is a prayer, it, it has the power of a mantra. So that's why they say Gayatri Mantra. And it is part of our Vedas. So the Gayatri was given to Nachiketa and within six years he developed enough Buddhi to take the right choice, to make the right choice. So that's why Yama is telling him, now that you have made the right choice of coming here, he offered him, he first tried to tempt him by giving him pleasurable things. He said, you take some money, you take wealth. In fact, he even offered him power over the whole world. You become a king, you do this, do that, just to test him, whether he will choose the pleasant or he will choose the good. But he said, I don't, I am not come here to get all these things. I had enough capacity, I could have earned it myself. If I wanted that money and all those things, I would not have come to you. I want that which you, that which is going to save my life, that which is going to give me immortality. If you want, you give me that. Seeing his determination, seeing his developed buddhi, Yama says, now you are a fit student. So the whole of Upanishad after that, Shreya, Preya, how to make the right choice, who makes the right choice. Everything is part of spiritual life or progressive scientific prog and progressive human development. So Vedanta said you go forward. Thakur also said you don't go forward. I mean, you don't go, I mean don't stop, stagnate, go forward. So he gave a beautiful example. Though it is an example, it is uh, very important. He said a wood cutter went to the forest. So he saw a lot of trees, so he cut the wood and he made a small fortune, but still he was working very hard whole day. Then somebody, some visitor was going there, he said, you go forward. He didn't understand why I can get cut the trees here and get enough money for my... But when he goes inside, he saw, sees there is a huge sandalwood forest. And one tree was enough to give him lot of wealth. So he said, that man had just told him go forward. Then when he cuts the sandalwood tree, he becomes very rich. Then he, so he was very busy cutting sandalwood trees, selling it. Then some another passerby comes. This is the role of a guru. Sri Ramakrishna says, the, everyone who gave that advice was a guru. So the next person says, don't stagnate here. If you go, you just go forward. Because that person knew there is something uh, much more wonderful than sandalwood trees. He can make much more money. So he goes inside, then he finds a lot of uh, jewels and a lot of a mine full of gold and other things. So he doesn't even have to work hard. 
So Sri Ram Krishna says that is what Vedas say. Charei Veti. There is a beautiful uh, uh, hymn in uh, Rig Veda, in the Vedas, which say Charei Veti means always go forward, always go forward. So human development, if we stagnate at a particular, oh now I have a settled job, I have a nice uh, job, I am earning enough money, then then uh, uh, spiritual development, progressive spiritual development doesn't take place. When you break the barrier of the mind and go to the buddhi, and then you make right choices, first you may become ethical, like Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar. Sri Ramakrishna knew that he is a good man, but he will be better if he does charity, ethics, with the higher spiritual goal in mind. He got stagnated, thinking that to be ethical is the end of life. Just as a uh, billionaire or a person who thinks that earning money is the end of life. So he will wants to become the number one in the world, richest man in the world, and because that is the goal. Nothing wrong, but then Sri Ramakrishna says, you go forward. Just don't stop because you have earned uh, a billion, you are the richest man on the earth. So this idea of progressive development starts, has to start uh, when the when you are still a child. Not that you can't start when you are grown up because better late than never. But ideally, ideally the age which our rishis said that you have to take care of all. You start with the child's physical growth, you start with his uh, prana, pranamai kosha, then you develop his manomai kosha, give him some skills that he can get a good job or he can do some business, he can do some trade and uh, stand on his own feet. But then don't stop there. There are two other levels. And the last level I will briefly tell, once that buddhi is developed, when he makes progress, then he understands that in spite of my buddhi, in spite of my intelligence, my life is miserable. This is a problem many spiritual people ask. I have taken initiation, why things are not... They think the moment you start spiritual life, all your problems will end. So Sri Ramakrishna tells that his own life is an example that his spirituality did not ensure that uh, his cancer would be cured. 90% of the devotees left because they thought, oh, what is the use of spirituality? They thought curing the disease is the only sign of a spiritual person. So Sri Ramakrishna knew that such many people will be filtered out. Only the genuine will stay. Because they knew there is something higher than these four levels. That higher level is to get rid of the bondage of karma which we have accumulated in several lives. That is not possible with just buddhi. Buddhi is a starting point. You develop the buddhi by repeating the mantra, by repeating Gayatri, whatever you do, that is the beginning of spiritual life. But when you reach a certain stage, you find that with all my spirituality, with all my buddhi, uh, I am not able to understand why these problems are still coming. And they will come to till he dies. So what is the goal of life? So there you come to the Anandamai Kosha. That is a level which is considered to be just before realization. Not that Anandamai Kosha developing that you will, but you have to transcend that, then you go and become one with, according to the Vedanta, the goal is Sat, Chit and Ananda. Sat is what Nachiketa was trying to find out, eternal life. What happens after death? Why do I die? Why am I afraid of death? That is Sat. Chit is to know. Why little knowledge confuses me? I want more and more knowledge. I am anchoring for more and more knowledge. Why? Because our the goal is to become one with the ultimate consciousness. And then Ananda, that is the joy which should not be limited. I am not happy if I get joy today, sorrow tomorrow. I want a joy which is unending. So whether that goal is possible, for that you have to transcend the 
fifth level and that progressive scientific way to go there is to first through yoga through all the four yogas find out how much of baggage of bad and good karma you have brought to this life because we are not what we have done in this life we are what we have done in many of your of our accumulated lives so sometimes if people suffer they should not complain they said i have done nothing bad in this life why do i suffer because you have to still get rid of the samskaras the causal body they call it karana sharira the first is thula sharira the gross body then sukshma sharira which includes prana mind everything and then there is a karana sharira the root cause of our problems is there so that is what after buddhi after developing buddhi we go to that level and then we start doing sadhanas why why do japa holy mother said japa siddhi <coughs> japa siddhi because 99% of us we do not know what kind of karma we have behind us what kind of suffering is in store for us we don't know can anybody say that i will be very happy till i die we can't say with all our buddhi we can't say i may have a very wise person i may be a very wise person spiritually very wise person not taking wrong decisions but still the unexpected just comes pops up from uh, the samskaras which are yet to be destroyed and that level that destruction takes place when you do sadhana so the goal progressive development when you go to that level your spiritual life begins at the fourth level it transcends the fifth level is the most difficult part when you if you see the life of all the sadhakas especially if you read the sadhak bhava of great master deliberately swami shardanand ji has given such a big chapter explaining how sri ram krishna did sadhana why one should do sadhana one why one should uh, repeat the holy name because that is the only way you can remove the fear of the unknown unknown is always there there are so many things like pandora's box they call we do not know what will come out when we will suddenly fall sick when suddenly things will change in our life nobody can predict no matter how intelligent we are no matter how buddhi how much buddhi we have developed even the most uh, uh, intelligent spiritually intelligent person one with wonderful buddhi he will be wise enough to tell that i can't say when sri ram krishna was asked what is the cause he said i don't know it's the will of mother but i know how to solve it even buddha said don't bother about because there is huge backlog of karma you have to so don't bother about suffering there is suffering don't try to find out the cause just to follow the eight fold path they have their own method of removing suffering and he says i guarantee because i have trodden that path and i have reached the goal so also sri ram krishna and all the vedantic tradition says there are many ways to handle this anandamay kosha which is ananda but it is not the ultimate ananda so when that anandamay kosha level we transcend by hard work it is as hard as swami premanand ji once said that we came to sri ram krishna because we thought passing matriculation is a very hard job we were escaping from our exams but then i find that this is still harder because sri ram krishna is taking daily exams he is uh, taking our exams on a daily basis there at least you can pass once in a year you appear and you pass we thought we have escaped from this school system everybody is every child is afraid of exams there is no exception everybody is bothered uh, they just wish that one day i should just finish these exams but uh, that is what pramanand ji also thought he said see thakur has accepted me and i have now he stopped studying in fact so he thought i have uh, he felt relaxed in the beginning but then he says sri ram krishna was far more strict and his exams were more difficult to handle so that exam was much easier so every time we develop the challenge becomes tougher so spirituality is though it is not easy 
but if it is followed as a science in a very scientific method uh, vedanta can be can result in uh, total human development in a very scientific way uh, our shastras especially vedanta yoga and other aspects if we practice they have designed this scientific way of total human development which ends with it the realization of the spirit or consciousness pure consciousness pure joy pure eternal existence so they may t- seem as distant goals for us because we can understand only up to three levels but once we take to spirituality uh, we will explore higher and higher uh, uh, i mean the uh, higher aspects of our personality and in a scientific way mind you everywhere when you develop your body you have to be scientific you can't just haphazardly develop your body you should know something about nutrition you should know about exercises we have to be as scientific when we develop when we balance our prana that's why the science of pranayama was there to balance all the forces so that you don't fall ill or you don't uh, disturb your mind you see uh, prana any imbalance in the prana not only harms the body but also harms the mind mind becomes restless mind becomes anxious mind becomes depressed depression is nothing but there is a lack of prana there is no enthusiasm and then you may say it is because of wrong food yes maybe to a certain extent wrong food wrong digestion many things are responsible so annamay kosha has to be kept uh, eating good food hygienic food nutrition and all those things are important so also is good exercises or at least good uh, uh, practices you know prana can be balanced by meditation also people think you don't have to just do exercises you if your mind if your meditation through meditation my holy mother says japat siddhi means through controlling the mind you can control the prana you can also control it by controlling the food and uh, the breathing exercises etc but prana can be controlled from the top bottom from top to bottom that is mind a disciplined mind will uh, discipline all the aspects of prana making a person happy so i'll conclude with this and if there are some questions you can ask now so the whole stages five stages of human development is what vedanta teaches so nothing is left out gross also the uh, they don't say that the training that you get in schools and colleges is not good it is definitely but it covers only three stages I have a question. You said that Buddha is eventually being able to differentiate from the good and the pleasant. Good, uh, good, yeah, Shreya and Preya, pleasant, yes. So how can I differentiate the good? Something is good rather than pleasant. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, by developing the buddhi. Actually, I can't because uh, the manas doesn't have the capacity. It can tell you. It can intellectually tell you what is good, what is bad. so you may uh, the question i am repeating for the benefit of online uh, uh, the question is shreya and preya that which is good in our life and that which is pleasant in our life so how to choose so the very idea of developing this buddhi is as our buddhi develops then we know what is really good for us and what is pleasant what is just pleasant so we don't fall for the pleasant thing without thinking we just say let let me just wait let me not you know there is a famous experiment i quote it very often uh, there is a experiment known as marshmallow experiment it's a experiment done to understand child psychology it will it will it will it is a very very important thing which will explain what is shreya and preya now the experiment i'll tell it briefly 
The marshmallow experiment was conducted by a child psychologist. Very small children were marshmallow, you know, it's a very nice sweet. All children like it. So there were a group of children, many children, and it was conducted for a very long time just to see. And they maintained contact with that child when it grew up how much is that child succeeded, boy and girls, both boys and girls. So the experiment was, there was video camera uh, uh, inside the room where they were asked to go. There was a table and a chair. They were told, please go inside. Sit there, if you can sit for two minutes, just two minutes, somebody will come and give you one more marshmallow. But if you eat, then you get only one, then you lose the other one. So every child went, there were many children, so they wanted to have a large sample size. They brought children from rich families, poor families, everything. They just wanted to see how, that the study is very important because it is Shreya and Preya. Now the child, the first child goes, sees, for one minute it just tolerates, but it is so, uh, it is such a pleasant sight to see a marshmallow. So then he said, well, let me for I want to eat. So it eats and comes out. So it doesn't get the second. The, some children they saw, they just waited. Two minutes they waited. But the camera caught, they were almost going like this. No, 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 no let me take. But something was telling them, just wait. One more, one more. But they were still very much. So the experiment showed that all children were not responding equally. And some children, they went inside, they didn't even look at the marshmallow. They just waited two minutes. Another came, they again waited for two minutes. They got third. They just went on waiting and uh, they, they had no conflict. So the, and then they, the, this experiment did not end here. They took the addresses and they saw the progress the children made in their life. So those who ate without waiting, they were the most, they were failures in life. And those who waited and with very calmness they waited. So they chose the good. See they had, they did not react. As I told you, there is a reactive mind which is known as manas, which is trained. Most of us are working at the manas level. That is what we should not do. Manas tells you, just react and take a decision. And that is what the children did. So their manas was developed, but those whose buddhi was developed, they thought, if I just wait for two minutes, they had self-control also. The other lesson that uh, came from this uh, experiment was that those who have more self-control or those who really know what the pleasant is and what the, what the pleasant can do, and what the good can do. The good in this case was waiting. Pleasant was eating. So all our, in all our life, uh, all the incidents of our life, you will see that many times we did not wait. We did not wait to find out whether it is, our mind will tell us. If the Buddha is developed, it will tell, tell us. Because that children who did not eat, they were the same children, but the others did not even have the buddhi to just think. If I just wait for four minutes, I'll get three, two more. Isn't it? So that is how we train the mind. And that comes through meditation. Buddhi is, doesn't develop by itself. It's not just Gayatri Mantra. Any mantra, any sadhana that you do, the buddhi itself will tell. Mind will become your guide. That's the only way. There's no shortcut in this. You can't say this is the formula of, to choose good and pleasant. The mind itself will be the guide. Yeah, there's any other question? So, buddhi is a higher level than the manas. Manas. Because the manas is known as manomai kosha. And buddhi is vijnana maikosha. Vijnana means, jnana means knowledge, which buddhi, all, which manas also will give you. Knowledge of physics, chemistry, mathematics. That is knowledge. That is also knowledge. But vijnana maya means special knowledge, higher knowledge. 
so they are different in 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 uh, uh, they explain it this way that the mind is very gross then it is a reactive mind it is very close to animal mind animals don't think so the buddhi comes when some animals think some animals are wise among animals also there are many minds uh, different minds monkey is the most restless but uh, the some animals like lion and all they are considered to be superior because they are mind is minds are steady they don't don't just jump from here to there so restlessness is also uh, a sign that you are still on the level of manas the very nature of manas is restlessness and the very nature of vijnana maya that is the higher mind is calmness sthita pragna one who is steady Online, I don't know. Oh yes. Uh, online, no. Uh, if there are some questions online, you can type here. Yes, yes. As you said that the level of buddhi in the control. Yes. The better. Now in this modern age, our children are getting there. All sorts of things which are actually works the other way. Yes, yeah, because there's over emphasis on the manas. Mm. Yes. Continue. Huh? So, so how <coughs> They will have mobile and all the games and No, mobile by itself nothing is wrong. Mobile, uh, developing the manas is not a bad thing because they have to go, they have to get knowledge. How they use the mobile is of course important because mobile can give you knowledge if they you know how to use it. But that is not the only cause of distract, uh, distraction. Of course, they call it, uh, there is a book published by our uh, Advaita Ashrama, which is known as digital distraction. <laughs> Many good articles are there in that. How digital? Yes, most of the uh, digital tools uh, cause distraction. But the thing is, when we we should not blame the children because, uh, as I told you, uh, uh, spirituality has to begin at the age of between age of six and eight. That is when they just are becoming a little mature. You have to, one has to teach them or one has to make a, uh, create a situation where they think before they act. All they have to do is think. You have to, it's difficult, I know it is difficult because children will just follow their mind like the small children, you know, but they fail in life. Because they just wanted, they could not stop their mind, control their mind and be happy uh, not eating. If they had been a little controlled, they would have settled for two or three or even four. They said, as many minutes you wait, so many marshmallows you will get. So that is the, the only way to control the mind, whether it is children or adults. There is only one way, that is through. Uh, Raj Yoga, as I said, Raj Yoga or uh, some people call it Mantra Sadhana or Gayatri Mantra repetition with meaning, with meaning, because you should know what the mantra means, otherwise it will be just music. You are singing a song in beautiful tune. Very, very often it happens, you know, people sing. There are some very good renditions of uh, Gayatri Mantra on YouTube. But if you see, the people who sing it, they should have been full of buddhi. Uh, but it doesn't very off. It's just their musical skill. How to sing properly. <laughs> so you have to understand the meaning. Even mantra is the same thing. Uh, after initiation, people think that just by doing the mantra, we have to think what the mantra is doing to us. There are instructions. What the mantra does to us. That is one of the easiest ways in the Ramakrishna tradition, the easiest way to develop buddhi is through repetition of the mantra. Not higher meditation, that will lead you still further higher. 
but uh, that is a very simple technique holy mother gave to literate illiterate people even the women used to come he, she said japa chidi just go on don't bother too much about gyana knowledge and all because they didn't have the capacity by and spirituality as i told you one can be a intellectual giant but a spiritual pygmy spirituality has nothing to do with uh, that manas manas good training of the mind will help because but then still you have to meditate or pray or do bhakti all four yogas are there do karma yoga also can help if it is done with the proper spirit चित्ता इज अ स्टोर चित्ता इज पार्ट ऑफ द यू सी दिंग इज द संस्कार दे आर नोन एज इन हर एंड टेंडेंसीज they are part of the chitta and chitta is part of the causal body so chitta is a causal aspect chitta is a subtle aspect when it comes to the subtle body and then you start thinking it becomes stula a uh, sukshma and when you act on that on the basis of the uh, old samskaras then it becomes stula gross gross subtle causal causal is the root it's like our swami ji gave a beautiful example when uh, sparkling water or any water where there is a bubble when it is at the bottom of the lake you don't see it it is there it is in the karana sharira but when the karana sharira causal body it, the cause is there but the effect is not seen so the causal body the bubble comes becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and when it comes to the sukshma you know that something is wrong with my mind i am getting all this temptations or whatever it is because of old samskaras so if you don't stop then it will go to the gross level like the bubble it slowly goes and when it goes to the top it will burst so that is what is happening every day every day it is happening so no matter how much sadhana we do only way it can be stopped is by uh, they say especially in the mantras it's a very big topic and uh, it is uh, they say the bija uh, the um, science of shakti puja or tantras they say bija sound uh, can destroy the uh, samskaras without allowing them to come out so they give so much importance the bija mantra and the name of the lord in other traditions it's just name of the lord you say can say any mantra what it does is it yeah okay so th- that is how uh, see digital distraction yeah. <laughs> so the, without even asking uh, the ai is uh, talking something <laughs> i didn't ask any question <laughs> so anyway that 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 uh, it becomes easy uh, because you see we don't know what is in our uh, the repository you know of samskaras which are deep in our mm-hmm. causal sharira nobody knows even uh, swami ji says i even i did not have the capacity by thakur's grace i could read others mind and tell what is good but he says thakur for him he could see your karana sharira the causal mind and tell you what samskaras you have so he will give you the right instruction so as a guru is perfect because he could see swami vivekananda says i i could not see but i by the grace of my master sometimes i would take the permission of the disciple and say let me see what samskaras you have if you permit me but thakur used to see he saw narain himself did not believe he said you will be greater than keshav chandra sen when thakur said uh, he is like a uh, small uh, flower and you are like a thousand petal lotus then he said he is mad keshav chandra sen is such a great personality i am just a college boy but he could see the samskara he knew he could predict but a human beings can't do but solution is there mother says just go on repeating the mantra it will 
Because why do we need to know what is there inside? There may be many bad things. So let it be destroyed without trying to bring them. You know, some people they go, uh, th that is the problem with uh, some psychologists. They try to dig out the past samskaras. That's not a scientific method according to yoga. Because if you force a person to go into the past, he may tell through hypnotism and many things, you know. And then they try to wake, awaken those samskaras. They call it uh, tendencies or whatever. There are many names given there. Repressed memories and suppression. This Hundreds of techniques have been have been evolved in Western psychology where they dig deep into the, he will go on asking questions, the counsellor. And then sometimes it doesn't work because that fellow becomes depressed. Why bother what is inside? If it is good, it is good. If it is bad also, if the solution is more important than what is there. That's why they say, don't go too deep. You have to clean it. If there is garbage in your attic, you can't keep good things there. You have to first clean. But take a little, just don't open the whole door. Then you will be, oh, the whole attic is full of garbage. So you take so much time to clean it. So it may be, we don't know. We may be born with good samskaras, who knows. But it is very difficult because we don't know the contents of our causal body. But we have to listen to the solutions that are given. And hope that there are not many samskaras to destroy. We can hope, only hope. Some people make quick progress. We should not be jealous because they had less samskaras. Some people take a long time. But anyway, the solution is there. You wanted to ask? Yeah. No, I don't know what is the, which one is the today's thinker. I want to know what is Spirituality. The, 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 the adhyatmic means you become adhyatmic when you consider the spirit more important than matter. So when does it happen? When you go beyond the buddhi level. When a person's buddhi is awakened, Vijnanamai Kosha, he has started becoming adhyatmic. He is not yet adhyatmic, but at least he has taken the first step. So they are not just words, they are stages in life. As I told you, when you, when a human being develops, he starts with a physical body. The child will do exercise, start walking, start doing exercises. He comes to a stage when he can walk on uh, uh, without any help. So slowly is developing, isn't it? So that is a progressive evolution of the human personality. But adhyatmic personality begins at the fourth level, I told you. That is the level of buddhi. So when that is awakened, your choice making capacity, the decision making capacity, especially to take the right decision at the right time, that opens up. Then you can say that person is adhyatmic or he is wise. Westerners will call it wisdom. An intelligent person need not be wise. He may be foolish because his buddhi is not developed. He may be intelligent. If he is not wise, then he will become a Hitler. Isn't it? So it does mean that if you do puja and uh, No, no. Rituals have... No, rituals will only help. No, you can become Adhyatmic. But doing puja is not the goal of life. Otherwise, the people are doing puja for so many years. And they are the same people with same anger, same uh, problems in life. If puja could solve all the problems, how you do puja and how it is awakening your Vignanamai Kosha or your Buddhi, that is important. If puja helps, then it is good. Sri Ramakrishna also did puja. But our his puja and our puja are different. We do it because it is a ritual. You have to just do it. So shall we close? Thank you so much, Maharaj. That's what I'm saying.